Once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet that was scarcely any bigger than himself and who had the need of a sheep. In 1943, Antoine de Saint-Esprit brought to the world a story that has enchanted millions of readers with its tale about the importance of childhood and the power of imagination. In this very special review, I look at how Mark Osborne has taken The Little Prince and brought it to the screen in a unique and unexpected way. But first, here's a clip. I just wanted to give your drawing back. You didn't like it? No, I did. Once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet that was scarcely bigger than himself. <gasps> never find anyone who wanted to hear my story. If you please, draw me a sheep. What was a kid doing there in the desert? There was no mention of life on any other planets. What's important to note is that this isn't a straight adaptation of The Little Prince. It tells the story of his adventures as he cares about a rose, visits other planets, and finally comes across a pilot in the desert. However, it's actually part of a larger narrative the film's director, Mark Osborne, has devised about a young girl who's being forced to grow up too quickly. That's something we see often these days, as children are pressured to become more mature and adult. And this new story is perfectly in keeping with the themes and ideas St. Ospere wanted to explore. However, I also like that it doesn't turn the mother into a villain. While she's wrong for putting such a rigid schedule on her daughter and having these ridiculously high expectations on her, it really comes from the love she has for her and the loneliness both of them are grappling with after an implied divorce. The bond between the girl and the elderly pilot connects well with the Little Prince storyline and complements the sequences from the book. When we get the scenes from the book, they are spectacularly and beautifully animated. The stop-motion animation is wonderfully realized, with some of the characters looking like they're made of paper. The animators do the tremendous job of adapting the illustrations to three dimensions. I especially have to commend the work on the planets and the fox. The filmmakers also chose the right voices for the characters. While some, like Ricky Gervais and Jeff Bridges, are more recognizable, a lot of the others are more anonymous, so I congratulate The Little Prince for not going for obvious stunt casting. James Franco is especially good as the fox, displaying a calm intelligence necessary for the role. I won't be going into spoilers or specifics about the third act, but as a fan of the book, I did have to think about it for a while and understand what the filmmakers were going for. I do think it might divide those who have the fondness for the original source material, and I cannot help but wonder what Saint Esprit would have thought about it. Without spoiling anything, Mark Osborne throws a surprising curveball and expands on the world of the Little Prince. However, it actually does work fairly well as he adds to the theme of forgetting one's childhood and does it effectively. The way it calls back to a lot of the book's colorful characters is quite clever, if at times unusual. The ending does seem to drag a little too long. However, by the end, it did manage to hit the emotional sweet spot. Overall, The Little Prince is a delight, and one that I'm glad has finally reached these shores after finding success in Europe, Asia, and South America. Mark Osborne had a monumental task ahead of him, and I think by making The Little Prince a story within this other story, he allows this to stand out among adaptations. It's a worthy companion piece to the book, and while certain elements are a bit questionable, I think it is something special. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.